Good morning, everybody. Well, I have got to load up the horses and take them up to the blacksmith, the shoer that I have, the Amish guy. And uh, just walking by the garden this morning. A few people have wanted an update on the garden. Here's a quick peek at how that's coming along. Still waiting on a, getting my tire fixed on my tractor. Mowed some second cutting yesterday. First, first of the year. That was kind of nice. It's pretty good. It's a little short, of course, from the drought, but still pretty good. But let's uh, let's get these horses loaded up and get them up the hill. Canadian Bell, ready to go. We're gonna do all four horses today. But I usually just take two up in the morning and then two up in the afternoon. Works pretty good that way. Because I've been so busy.
good point about it, dude. <laughs> Wait. Stop all the time. Yep. Yeah. It's dirty entertainment, but it's clean entertainment. That's right. Well, I got the horses up there, so. But then I. Like I said, I forgot to grab the pads and a few extra shoes just to see if he needs something different. So I gotta run home and run back. Fortunately, it's not very far away. So we'll run down, get that, come back up, and maybe he'll be out busy at work and we'll try and get a few videos so you can get an idea of what he does for me. Okay, back up here. With the pads and some extra nails. Some nails. I got a few days in this week. Yeah. Wish I could get a lot more in. Yeah. This shoe is pretty well shot. Yeah, it is. Especially for a hind shoe, I want it to have traction. But as you can see, these heels will stay for a long time, especially these double heels. I'm just talking to the camera. <laughs> but uh, that toe is gone. It's, uh, some ways I like having those short toes because it puts more on there. Puts the heels up better. What do you think, Eli? It does, it puts the heels up better. And I, with my Belgians especially, they seem to have heel yeah. problems. The more heels so. you've got, the better they are. Easier yep. on their tendons yeah. when you pull the heavy load. Yep. But if I was just farming, I wouldn't even worry about those shoes. They'd be fine. I'm having a lot of people ask about shoeing. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. A lot of interest in it, you know? You can make me out of the way a little bit. So Eli's been doing my shoeing for about two years now? Yeah, like that. He does a lot better job than I do. I don't know about that. It's a lot of work. So when you shoot, how do you normally do it? Just grab one foot, whatever, and go all the way through the whole process? That's it. So now he's putting the hook on the front side of the stock just to trim down the front side. Oh, oh you already pulled her front shoe off. Yep. As you can see, there's a little crack here, but yeah, that crack, I'm going to do a little bit of something about that one. I got that hoof maker. I'll fill that hole right up after we got the shoe on. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever done that with mine before? Yeah, you've done it. Oh, that'd be interesting. Nope, never done it. You do it with the, with the racing horses, though? Yep. Works good? Yep. Basically Bondo? Basically it's what it is Bondo, but it's made for hooves. Yeah. Huh. That's a Bondo's like a fiberglass and it's, it works on the hooves, but it is, well, 
I don't know if it's animal friendly or not. I mean, Drew's that Bondo. The Bondo, yeah. yeah well, scary. I don't know if they actually use Bondo, but I just heard it. There is people that do. Yeah. But this stuff is actually made for that. This is made for Yeah. yeah. Well, that'll be interesting. <laughs> So you actually, I guess you misunderstood me, so you actually pull off shoes off and then... Yes, I, yes, I, I did misunderstand you, that's what you were asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I missed. Yeah, I pull them all off and clean them and then put them on. Yeah. never actually been down here while you're shoeing because I've always which is the big 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 nice thing about it I've always just left the horses and gone back and gone to work but I don't have a lot of time today but I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch for a little while. and I was just cutting the clinches off because all these nails are bent over after they go in And if you don't cut them, you can break the hub off the outside. Before I had clinch cutters, I would take my little nippers and twist them off. <laughs> but it didn't work quite as good because then it's rounded yeah. and it catches the hoof coming off. Hey, lady. That shoe's been on there for just a little more than two months. And it's still a nice tight fit and I haven't seen any, there's been no loose shoes at all on these two and the other two haven't had loose shoes and they've been on even longer until this past week I did lose two shoes on Ken. Lost one yesterday in the hay field. Can't find either one of them shoes. <laughs> So you haven't done the bad front foot and that other the foot you took the shoe off everything looked good there oh is that the one with the other than the quarter track right but uh okay it's the other one that's yeah the, the other one you a little bit more yeah uh, i can see your heel that too good on that one. come on come on lady so maybe you can, when you take that off you can explain what's going on there because i don't know myself <laughs> and that's the one i think she's tender with yeah Where you tie that knot, I mean, you don't tie it, you just thread it in. It, it seems to hold good. No, it does, yeah. Now 
we're starting this other front foot where I think some issues. Should see Point. one. Right here, the shoe is off the outside wall, sitting right on the inside of the hoof, and that's a tender spot. Okay. And same here, there's uh -huh. not much heel there. Right. And quite possibly, the heel of the shoe was hitting the front. Okay. So that'll make them tender too. Okay. And that's a lot just because we've waited too long or they should have been reset sooner. Um, not right. as much that as she has got that hoof wall, as you can yeah. see. They're not growing like there's rings here, which are fever rings. Okay. And they're not growing good. Okay. That's why we're putting the pads back on, and hopefully we can get that heel to grow And out. the pads are actually going to press more on the frog, which is going to make more circulation in the blood, which will help heal that, help. correct? Right, right. That will get faster hoof growth on the heel. Yeah, yeah. And that does the same thing as the bar did before, that we've tried before. Yes. But we've had such good luck with those pads. It's I, it's great. I believe it's that oakum we put on the inside. Yeah. Which I'm helps. Telling you, those, you pull those pads off and they just hoofs have looked so good all winter long. So and maybe it's a combination of the a few things. There aren't too many of these draft horses or regular horses don't. They, they may be great horses, but there's always something that's a little bit wrong with her, with them. That is right. Seems like that toe is extra long too. Does mm -hmm. it seem it to you? Yes. And that's what usually happens if you get a case with sore heels. Uh -huh. The toe part will grow forward. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's almost a half an inch to the white line. Mm hmm. Really? Seems like sometimes when, when the feet low like that, you start cutting there. Their toes, their their sole down, and they you run into blood soon the, too. This one you do, yeah. I don't dare go much shorter yeah. than that. And they rasp it. That partially, I believe, comes from the okay, case she's heel sore. Yeah. And uh, she's not putting a lot of pressure on her heels. Yeah. She's putting Walking a lot of pressure close. here, then your sole's also going to push down, mm -hmm. which as you can see, it's the sole is out from the heel part. Yeah. So I think that's a combination of putting weight more on the toe part. Yeah, makes sense. And that's why I believe you get the extended toe where it goes out. Yeah. Just show you these pads that we're going to put on. These are used pads. They're actually snowball pads. That's what that bubble's for. Eli, do they make just straight flat pads for a situation like this? Yes, they do. But these will work fine. Oh yeah, this is the oak comb that he puts in, in underneath the pad, between the pad and the, and the hoof. And that's uh, that stuff's been around for. And used for hundreds of years for this purpose. 
and don't ask me what it's made of. <laughs> oh, <come. laughs> yeah, Where does it come from? I don't know. Don't have no research on that one. <laughs> in after the shoes on and I can plug it in the back. It puts a pad underneath the shoe like this. Really? And then puts it on. That's interesting. You just bend them over like that to start with. Yeah. Huh. So did that 80 year old guy teach you all this? No, not all this. He just did the raised horse part. Okay. He's basically self-taught uh -huh. this one. 16 years of experience should help. Right. <laughs> but you still get cornered every once in a while. Let's see if Max has on his chaps. I always felt, and I still somewhat feel that, as long as that nail comes out, you're safe. <laughs> Very but, true. But it's not always true. I no. thought that was true, but I had a horse years ago that uh, every single nail came out, and I, I did something. He, he played wet lane. He placed that nail inside the white line. Apparently. Taking chance. And then it, and then it turned. It came out, but it wasn't. It wasn't good. So now he has a block and he's clinching the nail over, bending it over tight. Oops. As he pounds on the head, the, the other end of the nail bends. Like I said, this is the first time I've actually seen him do his chewing, so I don't know exactly how he does do it. It's kind of new to me. Everybody does it a little bit different. I really don't care how he does it as long as the, the shoes are good and stay on and that's the way they bend so <laughs> I've been happy. Okay. Okay. So now he's cutting off the clinches. These toes on these shoes are homemade toes. Clips, I mean, clips on these shoes. They're homemade clips that he made himself. They, uh, they kind of stick out a little bit more than he would like, and they're, but they're quite heavy clips, and I like them. Probably a lot of you shoers would notice how much they st stick out, wouldn't you say, Eli? Yeah. But I've had no problems with them, and they've been heavy duty enough to, so often clips break off after a short period of time and they've held quite well. When they're that heavy you can't really bend them. You can't bend them. So I'm still well on. totally happy with this type. Now we're just cleaning off that. Okay, we're gonna put that epoxy in there. He's cleaning off the, the pad here, but now he's going to get epoxy, special epoxy that he has to go into this hole right here. 
So this epoxy, does it help heal it also? It probably doesn't no, really help it heal just, it. What it does, it'll help hold this crack together so it can start growing from the line down. Oh, okay. Okay, I see that now. Pretty fast drying stuff. About eight minutes cure time. Kind of handy having that pad there to help hold it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Brand new hole. Yep. Well, that's it for this video. Join us in our next one as we continue with the Bertrands getting their shoes reset and as I continue my conversation with Eli. Thanks for watching.